Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the NBL One Show. I'm Megan Hustrate. Well, we've got a new member of the illustrious 50 Point Plus Club in NBL One. Stacey Barr is a star in NBL One West with the Senators. She played in the championship last season. And at the weekend, she scored 51 points to join some amazing company in Steph Reid, Keely Froling, Nicole Munger and Michaela Roof in Women's Players to score 50 points or more in the history of this competition. We'll speak to Greg Heyer shortly about her amazing weekend. Well, sadly, we've had some tragic news rock our NBL One community over the last week or so. We'd like to send our sympathy and condolences to the Geelong family and also the family and friends of assistant coach Nick Ford, who passed away last week. And we'd also like to send our love and support to one of our own in Tiana Mangakar here, who announced this week that her breast cancer has returned Stage four cancer has forced her into retirement from playing basketball. We send our love and support to Tiana and we know that she's going to get through this. She wants to turn her passion into coaching and we know she'll be so good at it. So all of the NBL One family's thoughts and love is with Tiana right now. Well, we've got plenty to discuss on this week's show, so let's get into it. Well, the Bendigo women remain undefeated at the top of the NBL One South Ladder, but it was a game that perhaps we didn't expect that tested them the most. Matt Hickey, welcome, and tell us about the Braves weekend. Yeah, it was an interesting weekend for the Braves. As I said last week, the the big matchup between the Braves and the Falcons 1v2 uh, was the game to watch for me. And what a statement from Bendigo. They beat Waverley 92-46 to in that top-of-the-table clash, which is just wild. Uh, Amy Atwell led the way with 26 points and 13 rebounds. And we thought that that was going to be their biggest test of the weekend and arguably, you know, one of their bigger tests of recent weeks. However, that came the next day uh, against Casey. 97-91, they got the victory, but that was a lot closer. And to be honest, I thought those results might have been flipped. It might have been the big win over the Cavaliers and the tight win over the Falcons. But either way, they walk away with uh, two wins. But yeah, a very interesting weekend for Bendigo and and a statement victory against the number two team coming into the week. So it was a double weekend for Bendigo. Waverley, as you mentioned, lost to the Braves and then they lost again. Kilsyth had a huge win over the Falcons. Yeah, they did. 69-71. So Waverley, super tough. They would have been so geared up for that big top of the table clash against the Braves. They end up walking away from the weekend 0 of 2. Now we know they've got the quality to bounce back from them, but a big win for the Cobras in that one and one that took a few people by surprise, myself included. Well, the FIBA Women's Asia Cup tips off in a few weeks in Sydney, which is super exciting. So many NBL One players part of that squad at the moment, including Chantal Horvat. Tell us about the weekend that she had in NBL One South. Yeah, Geelong at Keelor, uh, a win for Geelong, 77-66, to 66, and it was Chantal Horvat, 29 points and 10 rebounds, who was the star of the show. She's a UCLA product, um, spent time with the Sparks, and it's just another one of these plays that we're so lucky to have in the NBL One South and across the, uh, the NBL One around the whole country. Such a high, high-quality player. Uh, they come in into this competition and they really flex their muscles. So she was fantastic, and uh, no doubt she's going to continue to have a great season in uh, for Geelong. Let's turn our focus now to the men's side of things and it was NBL named past, present and maybe resurgent who made headlines across the weekend. Yeah, they certainly did. I mean, we'll start with Dan Trist. There's a guy who who spent a little time in Europe, has spent time in the NBL, and here in the NBL 1, he's having a great time of it with Frankston. He had a massive 20.20 rebound effort, and for all the centers out there, that's the one that they're always chasing. They're chasing the magical 20 and 20. Forget about the triple-double. We'll get to one of those a little bit later. It's all about the 20 and 20. So against uh, Northwest Tassie, Frankston had a, a victory 76-69, and it was Dan Trist. 10 offensive rebounds, 10 defensive of rebounds, 20 points, 20 boards, a little three assists and two blocks to sprinkle on top as well. A fantastic performance from him. And then we've got a few championship or dual championship Sydney Kings across the league and one of them put up some huge numbers. 
Yeah, Angus Glover, a triple W. It was a monster, monster win for Altham against Casey, 114 to 66. We know that that Wildcats roster is stacked with talent, but Angus Glover, 18 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists. Got to highlight a triple double because they don't come around too often. He shot seven of nine from the field as well, so a super efficient night from him. Was doing it himself, uh, scoring the ball, was finding his teammates as well, and a little bit of glass cleaning never goes astray. <laughs> I ducked into MSAC on Sunday and saw a very big performance by someone who definitely should be playing in the NBL. Tell us all about Jack Purchase. Yeah, Jack Purchase, a really big win for Melbourne, 106 to 88 over Ballarat. He had 36 points, uh, 6 of 12 from the land of plenty for him, throwing 8 rebounds and 6 assists as well. And he had a plus minus of plus 22. Uh, there were some starters for Melbourne that only had a plus minus of single digits. So he had a massive impact on the floor. And he's a phenomenal player, as you say, should uh, be given the chance at NBL level. Uh, does a little bit of everything, but a massive uh, game for Melbourne. And it leads a little bit into my game of the week, which I think is going to be one to watch for them. Obviously, it's a limited weekend, uh, uh, just the games on the Thursday and the Friday with the long weekend. But uh, I'm really intrigued by Melbourne. Melbourne coming up against Sandringham. Most people would look to tip Sandringham in this one. It's fourth versus 15th, but maybe a little bit of momentum here for the Tigers, and I think they might be a sniff of an upset. Love the long weekend, but starting off with a bit of NBL 1 South action like we did at Easter, so very much looking forward to that and wrapping it up with you again next week. Thanks for your time. As always, Matt Hickey. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Well, we love to talk to our NBL One players about the aspects of their game they're working on in NBL One away from WNBL and NBL. Mila Goodchild's having a terrific season with the Pioneers and she's just signed with the Perth Lynx for the upcoming WNBL season and we caught up with her to chat about all those things and plenty more. Yeah, the season's been awesome. Um, yeah, loving Mount Gambia, um, really good club and the team's like bonding on and off the court, so I think that really helps with the chemistry on the court. I think the mid-range game, um, you know, it's a really good open area in between being your first defender and the helpline, so um, I think it's a great one to practice and, yeah, not 100% natural yet, so, yeah, just building it into the game. It's a great um, platform to just, yeah, expand your game, which is awesome. Um, yeah, so it was absolutely awesome. Yeah, I really enjoyed my first season in WNBL. It's a great league. Um, my first official contract to um, WNBL team. But yeah, it went really well. Um, yeah, we ended up making like semifinals and that. Yeah, so no, it was a really cool experience. And yeah, happy to be back in the WNBL again. Actually, so I actually got announced today um, that I've signed with the Perth Lynx. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'm super excited. Yeah. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, really awesome. It's that time of the week where we head up to Queensland to talk to our expert on all things NBL One North, John Guana. Welcome, John. Thank you, Megan. My favorite time of the week is here. I count down as soon as we say goodbye each and every week. Oh, me too. Who would have thought? Let's start with the Wizards because they continue to weave their magic. Wizards remain undefeated, 11-0. They did it without Nadine Payne this weekend against a tough Gold Coast team. That really fought them the whole way. They pulled out a 74-62 win, and they remain undefeated. We forget how talented sometimes this group is and how deep that talent goes, but no, no one other than Courtney Woods leading the way as usual, though. So she had 26 points, four rebounds, and four assists in the game. But we got to give a massive shout-out to A.J. Johnson, who had a huge game, double-double, 18 points, 13 rebounds, and did a lot of the defensive work against Kate Reese, who came in averaging over 20, only contributed eight points and seven rebounds. She fouled out in just under 19 minutes. So A.J. did a great job defensively on that and putting the pressure offensively on. A.J. is a multi-talented player, can get to the basket, can shoot, can create for others, and she did that. So a massive win for the Wizards. They remain undefeated, and they go up to Rip City this coming round looking like a very, very dominant team. This team is everything that everyone thought they would be, and they're proving it week in and week out. They sure are. We spoke about Courtney Wood's grandparents being at the game a few weeks ago. Courtney's mum, Dana, who was an amazing basketballer up um, your end of the world, 
to um, sent me a note to say her grandparents were very happy with the shout out on the NBR One show and that they watch all of Courtney's games back home in the US. So um, great job, John, because you call most of them. So um, always great to have family and friends tuning in from all around the world. Um, let's move on to the Capitals now because they had a very crucial weekend picking up two big wins. Really big wins for the Caps, and they're doing it at the moment without Abby Cabillo, who unfortunately is out with a, an injury. But the players have stepped up, in particularly Maya Lloyd. She's been phenomenal for the Caps. I really, you know, I know that they'd be disappointed, and we're all disappointed that Abby's hurt because that was such a dynamic backcourt. But since Abby's been out, Maya has really put even more on her shoulders, and she's delivering. This weekend, she had 33 points, 14 rebounds, and 8 assists. She shot over 60% from the field in a win against the Pirates. The Pirates are in the top four spots, and the Caps picked up a huge, huge win. That's a big, big win for this Capitals group. Uh, they also got a big contribution from Steph Collins, who had a double-double with 21 points and 11 rebounds, also three blocks. Uh, and they did it also defensively, holding the Pirates to those 72 points. Matty Rochi had a great game, uh, but they really kept Leah Scott quiet, who had 12 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists. Not the offensive production that the Pirates have come to see from Leah. Then the Capitals backed it up, and they went up to the Sunshine Coast and got a great road win against a very, very tough Phoenix team. I know Phoenix, record-wise, they, they look like they're struggling a bit, but they fight, they scrap, and they got lots of talent. And they, it was a defensive struggle. Caps picked up an 11-point win, 72-61, and again it was Maya Lloyd, 23 points, 12 rebounds, and 3 steals. There was only one other player in double figures for the Caps. It was young Tala Stolberg. She, only, she had 11 points. So really shows you how much of that offensive load Maya Lloyd is carrying. And teams are scouting her. They know that she's going to have to contribute and put up those offensive numbers, and she's still able to do it. The two wins for the Caps, big time for them because they move up to 7-5 and five on the season, and they sit in seventh spot on the ladder at the moment. Well, it comes as a surprise to absolutely no one that Logan are thundering it in. They are on a roll at the moment. They are on an absolute roll, and everyone from Logan said, wait till we have our full team, then you can critique us. And, you know, again, there's not really a lot to critique because at the moment they have picked up five straight wins. They're at nine and four. They're in fourth on the ladder, and they are week in and week out making their way up that rung. I wouldn't be surprised to see them in that top two spots potentially, uh, and they are steamrolling that way. Five straight wins. Another road double. We say it week in and week out. They went up to Rockhampton, got a big win uh, on Friday night, 66-53, and then they backed it up on uh, the next night against Mackay, 69-61. Surprise, surprise, Michaela Roof, another huge game, another huge weekend. 21 points and 22 rebounds against uh, Rocky, then 24 points, 24 rebounds, three assists, three blocks against Mackay. I mean, it doesn't come as a surprise. It actually surprises us if she doesn't have the 20 and 20 week in and week out. Uh, she's playing at an MVP level, even though she's kind of entered into the season a little bit later than we've seen. Uh, Michaela Can also has been excellent. Michaela Can carried a lot of that offensive load while they were waiting for Roof to return, uh, but she continues to do anything and everything for this Logan Thunder group. 13 points, 4 rebounds, and 6 assists for Michaela Can uh, against Rockhampton, and then 15 points, 2 rebounds, and 7 assists in the win against Mackay. They did it without Ash Taya as well, who's over representing New Zealand. So a really good weekend for Logan. They are coming. Everybody better watch out. They are unbelievable, those two Michaelas, and I think maybe one week we'll go around to our experts and nominate the best duos in NBL one They would have to be up there, that is for sure. Now, before we move on from the women's action, let's talk about another little winning streak that's building. Yeah, North Gold Coast. I want to give them a big shout-out because they've put together three straight wins, and it was a great win for them on the weekend against Red City, 93-74. They're at 6-5, and five, above 500. They're sitting on ninth on the ladder just by percentage points behind uh, Cairns, but this team is building a lot of momentum, and leading the way for them is Aaron Riley, the captain. 36 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 assists on the weekend against Red City. Emma Gandini had a huge weekend as well. 7 of 10 from 3. She finished with 26 points. Uh, and I also got to give a shout out to their import guard, Lexi Held, because she's really added another dimension to this group and has been a key to this winning streak. Watch out for this North Gold Coast team because they're just on the fringes of that top eight uh, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. Three straight wins. 
Yeah, one through to nine is is so tight and unbelievable. Pool of talent in the women's side of things. Let's cross over to the men's now. And there are winning streaks there too that have extended to double figures. There sure is. And I want to start with the Gold Coast Rollers because they picked up their 10th straight win, which is a massive, massive achievement for them. They were fantastic on the weekend. They had a big win on Friday night against the Wizards in Northside, 90 to 77. Now listen to this. If I told you that Jason Kadee and Todd Blanchfield would combine for 19 points, 21 rebounds and 17 assists, you'd probably think Gold Coast would struggle a bit, but ah, they definitely didn't because their young guys stepped up. Elijah Kamu led the way with 21 points and five rebounds. Preston Legasic had a huge game, 20 points, five rebounds and seven assists. And Cam Few had an awesome game with a double-double, 18 points, 12 rebounds and two blocks. That's something that Gold Coast prides themselves on. They won the NBL One North Championship with putting a lot of trust and faith in these young guys. That's carried into this season. And those players are stepping up week in and week out. And they did that on Friday night for the Gold Coast to maintain their momentum. Then on Saturday night in the game of the week, it was a grand final rematch. And Gold Coast blew away Rip City, 120-97. to 97. Todd Blanchfield, 41 points. I've seen him a few times this season start off really hot in the first quarter and then kind of not cool down, but other players stepped up. But Todd played straight through for 40 minutes and, and he had his 41 points to go with 15 rebounds and five assists. Jason Kadee, a quiet 24, 5, and 14. And Preston Legasic also had a huge game, 26 points, four rebounds, and three assists. I also got to give a shout out to Kawat Noy because he had 45 and 12 in the loss for Rip City. And Matt Kenyon had a triple double, 22 points. 12 rebounds and 10 assists. You, you hear that production and you think it was a tight one, but Gold Coast put the foot down, put the foot down early and never stopped. They're on a 10-game streak, but they're only sitting in second spot on the ladder, which is even crazier. And great interview, John, with Toddy Blanchfield. You can catch that on John's Instagram and make sure um, you stay up to date with all of the NBL One North action. There's lots of great snippets on John's Instagram and also NBL One North as well. Let's move on to Logan now because they have maintained top spot. Well, they have, and it's crazy that I'm talking so much about Gold Coast while Logan is still rolling as well. 11-1 at the moment. They're sitting in the top spot, and very much like the women, they went on that road double and picked up a couple of nice wins. Majok Dang playing at an MVP level as well. 31 points and 7 rebounds to go with 3 assists against Rocky. He followed that up with 23 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists against Mackay. Uh, Rasmus Bach had a big game in Rocky. Then Sean Bruce also had a big game, as well as Boston Maslin. We talk about Gold Coast depth. Logan is just as deep as well. They may not necessarily have as strong of a bench, but they still have a very strong bench. And this Logan team is playing with a ton of confidence. You know, Sean Bruce has won championships up here not in Queensland as well as at the NBL level. Majok Dang is an unbelievable talent. How no one has snapped him up for the upcoming NBL season is a mystery to me because he's playing phenomenal basketball and showing true leadership. And this Logan team just continues to stack wins on top of wins. They already have a win over the Gold Coast earlier this season as well. And there was a, a poll put out on NBL One North's Instagram, and you should definitely check it out, who they think the favorites are going to be. And Logan actually pipped a Gold Coast. A lot of people tipping Logan to win, and rightfully so. They're at 11-1 in first spot, uh, and it doesn't look like they're going to lose in the grip on that anytime soon. Love those poll results. Always very interesting. Let's finish with a very exciting finish. An amazing finish for the North Gold Coast Seahawks men. Uh, it was a great game between them and Red City. It really came down to the final possession. Jalen Key uh, for Red City had actually tied the game with five seconds to go. Uh, it was tied at 97. North Gold Coast took a timeout. They went advanced the ball on a sideline out-of-bounds play. Aiden Krause entered it directly into the post for Majok Majok. The double team came. Somehow, Majok Majok split the double team, threw up the old school hook shot, and it bounced in, and the crowd and the players went absolutely nuts. 
for North Gold Coast. What a way to win a game. And they're playing amazing basketball as well. The Seahawks are in sixth spot at six and five. And this is a really good win for them. They are building momentum. They are building a, a great camaraderie amongst the group. You know, Aiden Krause ha had a great game. He had 21 points, eight rebounds, and six assists. Josh Duach had 20 points. They added Wesley Harris from Rockhampton. Rockhampton got rid of Wesley. Uh, he came down to North Gold Coast. He had 21 points and 8 rebounds in this game, which could prove to be a huge win for the Seahawks group, who at the moment are in the 8, and they're going to fight to maintain that spot. They want to play some finals ball, and wins like this are definitely going to help them secure their spot. Well, the action is so hot in NBL 1 North, and we love chatting about it every week with you, John. Thanks for your time, and we look forward to doing it again soon. Thank you, Megan. I can't wait. I'll see you next week. Time to talk all things East with our expert in the NBL One East Conference, Jacinta Govind. Welcome. We've got plenty to talk about this weekend, as usual. Yeah, we sure do. Thanks again for having me back, Megan. And uh, the women's competition this round for round 12 was really, really exciting. Well, let's start with that because there was a little bit of everything. And we'll start with a rookie buzzer beta. That sounds exciting. Yes, definitely. It was a very tight game down uh, for the Albury Wodonga Bandits as they hosted the COE. And in this game, the Bandits welcomed their second import, Mallory Bates. And uh, I, hopefully it was a great introduction to the league because this one went down to the wire. So the COE were missing a few key players for different reasons. Um, and it was still a very tight, uh, very tight game. But uh, one of the May recruits for the COE, Bonnie Dees, who's originally from Frankston, she delivered a three point dagger in the final seconds to give the COE the win. So it was the talk of the town. I'm sure lots of hearts were broken in Albury, but um, lots to celebrate for the COE. And there was plenty more action and drama for the COE across the weekend. Yeah, so they had to back up and play Newcastle Falcons, another highly competitive team in the women's competition for MBL One East. And this was another exciting game. Uh, COE was seen back home at the AIS arena, but unfortunately given a taste of their own medicine when Nicole Munger dropped a big bomb to send the game into overtime. And then Newcastle uh, won the extra time period 13 to 17 to clinch the win. And Munger finished the game with 33 points, nine rebounds and three assists. Of course she did. She's playing in Canberra. That's what she does. <laughs> She's representing uh, the Falcons in this NBL One East season. Let's finish with the Crusaders because this is a, a very good story. Oh, it was massive. And uh, I had the absolute pleasure of seeing it live and being able to commentate this game. So what you may have heard on air, but what my uh, facial expressions and body was doing off air were probably telling you two different stories. So it was very hard to contain my excitement. But it was the typical battle of a David versus Goliath, and it was Central Coast Crusaders uh, who did the impossible by beating the top team, the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles. So the Crusaders came out with a very strong start, and they were able to weather a third quarter wobble or two um, that wasn't going their way in that third. But Dana Caro uh, made sure the Crusaders got a win. She made a crucial three-point play in the dying seconds of the fourth qu uh, quarter giving them the edge. And so Dana Caro, the hero of the game, she ended up finished with 22 points, three rebounds and five assists, but was strongly supported by Nicole Hutchins, who had 18 points and 15 rebounds, shooting at 67%. And it's also worth noting that coach Lossalini Katia, who's usually the assistant coach, had to step up into the head coach's role today. So she had a pretty tall order ahead of her, but came off with a massive win. That was a great result and uh, a great day for the Crusaders. Let's move across to the men's side of things now because we do love a bit of Tui talk on the NBL One show. What's the latest? We do love a Tui or two here in NBL One East. Uh, and this time it was James Tui and he was showing his full hand against the Penrith this weekend. So uh, commonly known as the shot doctor down uh, in Canberra. He helped the Gunners to a 16-point win by adding 21 points, 7 rebounds and 5 assists with 4 steals 
shooting at a very good 67%. Now, I know that the shot doctor himself probably has high standards, so I hope that he's still happy with that high 67% overall. <laughs> Speaking of great skills, Hayden Blankley showed his at the weekend. Yes, as the season continues for Bankstown Bruins, still struggling to get a few wins here and there, Hayden Blankley is doing his best uh, to get his team on top. And this weekend, they had to play against the very strong Maitland Mustangs, but um, with the Bruins unfortunately going down at home, uh, Blankley flirted with a big triple-double. He ended up with 29 points, 7 rebounds and 8 assists. So if only he had a, a couple more dimes there, he probably would have had one of the biggest triple-doubles of the season. And that's saying something because there's been some massive stat lines amongst NBL 1 East, that's for sure. Let's finish with a bit of a veteran who's shown he's still got it. Yeah, absolutely. Tony Tolave is a name that... Uh, some may be familiar with if you're a long-standing NBL fan. He previous play, previously played NBL for Illawarra Hawks and Sydney Kings from 2015 to 2017. And then in 2018, he also represented New Zealand as a tall black. Uh, but this being round 12 of NBL 1 East, Tolave showed that, like he said, he still got the goods. He dropped 35 points and shot at 64% uh, for a pretty good win for the Inner West Bulls over the Sydney Comets. It's what we love to see, a bit of youth, a bit of experience showing their wares on the MBL one a stage. Great to catch up, Jacinta. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to doing it with you again next week. Thank you. See you soon. Well, we had a new member join the 50 Point Plus Club at the weekend. It was a star of MBL one West, and to talk us through it is Greg Heyer. Welcome, Greg. Tell us all about Stacey Barr. Yeah, Meg, Friday night, it was a special night, uh, certainly for the Warwick Senators and Stacey Barr. We know the the Warwick Senators have sort of had a, a very inconsistent year uh, throughout the season. And, and Stacey Barr, obviously, last year's NBA on West MVP, um, yeah, has sort of been that uh, synopsis as well. Hasn't played well, but she went in fuego. Eight from 11 from the three-point line, 19 from 27 from the field, and a handy eight uh, boards. And got a much-needed win. Now they go five and five, but she went... 51 points. Um, I don't care whatever level you're playing, whether that's Monday night, um, domestic ball. If you score 51, that's respectable. And she was complimented by Mackenzie clinch Hoycard, who had a near triple-double, 12 points, 13 boards, and, and 9 assists. And now they play the undefeated Kerber and Cougars this weekend. Um, so that's going to be a really good, I guess, litmus test to see where they're at for this season. It was an unbelievable performance by Stacey Barr. She joined some unbelievable company. And it, it's not often that someone else's big weekend would be overshadowed by a game like that. But there was another big double-double. Yeah, Taj Morrell from the June Love Wolves. She's been um, special all year. Um, Shea Parker-Williams has missed a few games and um, they've sort of been toing and froing. Obviously, they lost to Kerbin Cougars last week. But she was uh, remarkable, 24 points and 22 boards on the weekend and um, against the Perry Lakes Hawks, who we know are a pretty potent lineup. Uh, Robbie Ryan as well had 27 points and four boards and five assists. So um, they remain second in the ladder, but... Sort of when I looked at that weekend, I sort of laughed. It went Tej Morrell, 20 and 20. Um, if that's the second story of the week, um, things are special at NBL 1 West. And some winning streaks have continued. Who are they and how long are they? Yeah, the Kerbin Cougars remain undefeated. Um, they went up to, to Goldfield Giants. We know, we spoke about it last week, they had the inclusion of Darcy Garbin. Um, and they got a, a big win. Like They would have been battle-tested um, up there. Um, so they played well. Now they've won 10 in a row. Um, and then Rockingham Flames, after a pretty slow start of the year and um, critics were sort of calling for heads and whatnot, they lost their first three games. Now they've won eight in a row. Um, and they had a great game, um, beating Mandra Magic uh, quite convincingly on Friday night and then trouncing Bunbury Slammers. Um, Lisa Coop had a really good game against Friday on Friday night against the Magic, which is her best game of the season. And Mary Crack is leading the way again for them. So, um, yeah... At, some big streaks happening, eight games and 10 games, and good to see both those teams continue winning uh, this weekend. Let's continue the conversation around winning streaks as we move our focus to the men's side of action. Yeah, well, 
who likes Hawks played against, I guess, maybe a traditional rival right there. They play for the Game Mega Shield, um, which is uh, against uh, it, both clubs. Very storied highlight um, around settling around cancer awareness right there. But Prolakes remained on top of the standings. Um, Mitch Clark, uh, he had a great game. 30 points in, in less than 30 minutes. Very efficient. Um, and he um, had a really good sort of beneficiary right there. Andrew Ferguson, who's come back from Japan. Um, he was pretty good as well, um, you know, eclipsing that 20-point mark. And so... Yeah, that old Perry Lakes lineup just continues uh, trucking along. They they remain on top of the standings, and they have a really juicy counter against the Perth Redbacks this weekend, who have you know knocked off the Rockingham Flames in the last few weeks as well. So um, sets up for a really testy uh, game, and um, pleasing to see Mitch Clark, who's a fringe NBL uh, talented guy, um, go off this weekend. And finally, Geraldton and Willerton continued their winning streaks. Tell us all about them. Yeah, look, Geraldton uh, went up and they played against um, Goldfield Giants and, and that's their, their country rival and um, got a pretty convincing win. Unfortunately, Goldfield's dropped both games this weekend, which was good for them. But uh, Wilton, um, going to take a lot of confidence here. Um, they played Eastern Suns, who have been playing well. Joe Cochrane uh, was great. Albert Manza was great as well. Um, Darnell Hoskins was limited. He, um, you know, he didn't play his normal game. He's an MVP candidate. Gorjak Gak was solid, um, but Travis Fee coming off the bench, um, th- you know, had a really, really pleasing performance. And he had 18 points. And you know, those bench guys coming uh, the business end of the season or grand finals to step up will be good. So um, massive for them. Um, you know, they remain top four and they continue winning um, for both those clubs. They're really striking hot at the right time. Action packed as usual in the West, Greg. Hi, thanks for bringing us up to speed. Look forward to chatting to you again soon. My absolute pleasure, Meg. Thanks as always. Let's head over to South Australia now to chat all things NBL One Central with Tristan Prentice. And Tristan, in the women's action, we had a team breakthrough for their first victory of the season. They certainly did, Megan. And I tell you what, extra DLC content gives. The Lions, that elusive win they needed. It was uh, Jaden Delacerta who was in video game mode. She produced an epic triple-double in her side's first win of 2023, as you mentioned. An upset 68-72 win over the Normwood Flames at the Arc. Delacerta now 22 points, 12 rebounds and 10 assists in her side's win. With Tiana Sears also potent with 19 points, 16 rebounds, joining her with the double-double. The entirety of the uh, Normwood Flames points actually came from their starting five with Aleka Kewen. Once again, huge against the Lions with 14 points, 13 rebounds and two blocks. But that first win for the Lions will give them a lot of confidence heading into the second half of the season. Great to see a team break through and get a deserved win and some reward for their effort. Taylor Brazel is an up-and-coming star right around the country, that's for sure. And she continues to do her thing for the Sabres. Absolutely, she did, Meg. And uh, it was a dynamic uh, denial of the uh, North Adelaide Rockets by... Brazil and the brilliant Sabres, of course. The under-19 gem produced 20 points, six rebounds, five assists, three steals and two blocks. But her side put on a huge masterclass of dominant defense in that one, diffusing the Rockets 91-49 to at the Cave in Springbank. And Taylor Brazil, as we know, going to be that under-19 gem very soon, Megan. And uh, one to watch for the future, of course, being on the Adelaide Lightnings list for next year as well. Yeah, looking forward to what's ahead in uh, the not-so-distant future for Taylor. Let's talk about Shana Thompson because we know that she's got NBL1 experience playing in South previously down in Tassie, but she continues to do big things in NBL1 Central. Shana Thompson is having an amazing season and she shined bright in the second half uh, in the KO game of the week. Uh, It was a comeback over the West Adelaide Bearcats. She hit 27 points took uh, six rebounds and three assists in her performance as the Norwood Flames burnt over the top of the West Adelaide Bearcats, 66-75 to 75 in the second half at the Bearcat Cave. Um, a sharpshooter from Japan who's just joined West Adelaide in her second game in Hanoka, um, Ikematsu, uh, now four triples in her 16-point, three assists and rebound contribution, had the Bearcats out by 12 points with nine minutes to play. However, the Flames... Went 9-27 to in the final quarter, including a 24-point unanswered run with Thompson and uh, Sophie Kerridge had 9 of her 18 points coming in the final term and narrowly missed 
a double double and a triple double with uh, nine assists and eight steals. Uh, that helped upset uh, last year's champions, Megan. Let's continue the Bearcats theme as we move across to the men's side of action. They had a big game against the Panthers and there was an almighty battle between two big stars. Yeah, there was. It was Adelaide 36ers of old and new going at it at the jungle with West Adelaide Bearcat. Lachlan Albrick, of course, who was on the Sixers list uh, a couple of seasons ago. 30 points and nine rebounds going head-to-head with new signed Adelaide 36er from the South Adelaide Panthers in Alex Starling. Finished with 31 points, 11 rebounds, four assists and three blocks in the Bearcats' 82-95 win. It was another former Sixer in Anthony Jumick that also provided some big numbers too with uh, 26 points, seven rebounds, four steals and three assists. Megan, there were 36ers old and new everywhere at the jungle on Saturday night. Well, last round we spoke with all of our conference experts about young stars, up and coming talent that was on show and performing right around the country. And it was great to see another teenager step up in NBL One Central in the round just gone. Well, he may be uh, not um, old enough to drive, Megan, but he can certainly shoot. And that was the case in the first 35 minutes of the game between the Southern Tigers and the Woodville Warriors. A 15-year-old prodigy named Alexander uh, Dickerson stole the limelight in his first start for the Southern Tigers, amassing 23 points, including a whopping seven triples from 12 attempts to go alongside seven rebounds and four assists. We did some digging around here in South Australia, and I believe... He would be one of the youngest South Australian men's starters since the uh, Daryl, the Iceman Pierce, took the court for the Panthers in the late 70s. So that's how long back we're going. But there was a man on a mission, uh, Megan, uh, in Yuan Stepney, who eclipsed his pre- previous career best with a thumping 38 points with six triples at 54.5% uh, from uh, the three-point line, including... The, um, uh, an incredible four-point play down the stretch to drag his Woodville Warriors uh, away from a huge upset, 90-84 to 84 at the Castle of St. Clair. So if it weren't for Stepney, the Warriors would have uh, been undone by the 15-year-old, no doubt. Yeah, the future and the present on show in that one. And let's finish with the Flames because they burned strongly in the second half to produce a comeback victory. Well, you thought the West Adelaide Bearcats' uh, victory over South Valley was impressive on the uh, Saturday night. On the Sunday, uh, as you said, Moses uh, manufactured a miracle to stop uh, a streak for the Bearcats. His final quarter, Moses Nwangi, of 12 points, saw the Flames run rings around the West Adelaide Bearcats. It ended their streak at eight with a comeback 87-102 to win at the Bearcat Cave. Nwangi nailed 21 points from the pine to spark the Flames to a 14-31 to last quarter uh, but again, Drimmick with 26 points, 9 rebounds and 3 assists, and Albrick with 23 points, 7 rebounds and 3 assists. Put the Bearcats out by as many as 11 points in the third quarter, but along with the Wangi, Jack Stanwicks with 26 points, 4 rebounds and steals, and Trey McBride, also known as Walter McBride, uh, 25 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds and 4 steals. They started the fire for the Norwood Flames in the second half, and they just engulfed the uh, Bearcats' defense. Well, there's a bit of a break this weekend around some conferences in the NBL one with the King's birthday. So we're going to catch up with a few players next week and shine the spotlight on them. And Tristan, we'll chat to you in a couple of weeks' time. No problem at all, Megan. Thank you so much. And uh, always love chatting NBL one central with you. Thanks for joining us on another massive edition of the NBL one show. It's King's birthday long weekend in a few states around Australia. This weekend, there's a little bit of a pause for a couple of conferences, but plenty of action in others. We will be back this time next week to wrap it all up. Enjoy the basketball in your conference, and we'll see you then.